All right, friends. So today is Monday, April 27th, and we are continuing, like Miss Ishley was saying, to learn about our modules. So um, learning about writing and learning about pollinators and all that important stuff. So if you have your microphone on right now, if you would please mute your microphone so that we can have some talking time and then we'll let you know when it's your turn to talk as well, okay? So I'm looking for friends. Adanya has hers muted. B, good job. Good job friends, Michael. during this time, if you ever have a question, all you need to do in the chat is make your question and we'll come back and answer it, okay? You don't need to unmute yourself. Yeah, you can do that or you can even um, press the raise hand button if you can find that. But if you don't know where that is, just press or type it in the chat like Miss Dishley said and we Perfect. will either answer it right away or we'll answer it in a couple of minutes, okay? Yeah, because I can only see a couple of you so it's easier if you just put it in the chat. Yeah, I can only see a couple of you too. So if you're like standing, standing there raising your hand, we can't always. I can't see you. It's not All like right. we're in the classroom. Oh, I wish. That's okay. All right, friends. So the purpose of today's lesson is for us to use text and images to make predictions. Um, we're going to talk about collaboration. We're going to look at an informational writing passage. And these are our targets for today. I can analyze a model of informational writing about hummingbirds. And I can create a scientific drawing of a bee. So those are the well, friends. All week, we are going to be working on writing an informational writing piece. Today, we are going to show you an example of a high quality piece about a hummingbird, but you friends are going to be writing about bees, okay? So we are going to show you a high quality piece of writing today about a hummingbird, and then moving forward, you're gonna be doing and using the hummingbird writing as a model, but you're gonna be writing about bees. And then on Friday, we're going to set up times where you can meet with us and read us your writing. Okay. <laughs> Myra looks excited. <laughs> I'm excited. All right. So we're going to learn about hummingbirds, like we said, but you're going to be focused on bees. Okay. So um, our guiding question that you've been learning about with Missy Chalet is, how do pollinators help plants grow and survive? So we're going to keep thinking about that question. How do pollinators help plants grow and survive? Um, I think you've seen this chart over here. Can you see this chart with all these little pictures on it? I think you've seen this before. And for this week, like Ms. Dishalay was saying, we're going to focus on recording observations using drawing and writing. And I, it's not TikTok, girlfriend. We are learning. Take a seat. Okay. So we're going to break down our learning target a little bit more. You want to help us, Ms. Dishalai? I would love to help. So the learning target says, I can analyze a model of informational writing about hummingbirds. So the word analyze is bold, which means it's super important. And analyze means to examine something closely. A model is a strong example. And informational writing is writing that is used to inform or teach our readers about all we have learned. So I can analyze or examine something closely, a model, which is a strong example of informational writing, which is writing that teaches or informs the reader about hummingbirds. So today we're going to look at a writing of hummingbirds. And then friends, moving forward, you're going to use our model to write about bees. Wonderful. Okay, so we've got a couple new friends here that just joined us. Friends who are just joining us today, we are analyzing a model of informational writing. The model that we're looking at is about hummingbirds, and then later this week, starting tomorrow, you guys are going to be writing about bees. So you can use this as kind of a um, guide to do your own writing. Okay? All right, so if you're not muted, go ahead and mute yourself so that we can have some talking time. Like Miss Dishalai said, if you have a question, type it into the chat and we'll come back to it soon, okay? All right, All right guys, so this is our model. And this is a writing model 
and we're going to read it to you. And then we're going to answer the questions of what is this writing model all about? And what did you learn about hummingbees from this writing model? Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to go through and I'm going to read it. And it's called Hummingbird Writing Model. How do hummingbirds help plants grow and survive? Pollen helps plants make seeds, fruits, and new plants. Plants need birds to accidentally move pollen from plant to plant. These birds are called pollinators. Hummingbirds are pollinators that help plants grow. Hummingbirds fly quickly to red flowers to drink nectar. When they visit the flower, pollen sticks to their long beaks and tops of their head. Now the hummingbird has pollen grains on his beak and head. When it flies to another flower, some of the pollen grains fall off and are left there. When the new flower is pollinated, a new seed can grow. Hummingbirds are important pollinators that help new plants grow and survive. So let's look at the questions. What is this writing model all about? Take a minute and think in your brain what this writing model is about. What did we learn while we read this? Go ahead and type in the chat. What is this writing all about? What's the gist or the main idea? I'm gonna just take this little pen tool, Miss Ashley, and I'm gonna draw a box around the piece of writing. So a lot of text on this page. And I just wanna make sure you know what you're looking at, friends. Perfect. All right, there we go. So go ahead and type in that chat if you haven't already. What did we just read about? What did you learn? If you can't find the chat and you want to share, you can um, use one of the reactions. You got it, Brene? Type it, type it in the chat if you know what it's about. What's it about? I see people hard at work typing, Misty <laughs> Good job, guys. Renee, do you want to share with your voice? Yeah. Go ahead. You don't know? Okay, keep thinking. Tamara said it's about different kinds of bees. We did, there is the word bee in there, but most of that is about hummingbirds, right? It's about different kinds of pollinators. You're right, though. Good job. I'm gonna give you about one more minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anaya, friend, let's leave Snowball out of this ELA lesson, okay? Yeah, good job, B. We learned <laughs> what pollinators do for a living. Exactly. We learned how they pollinate. All right. So if you're still typing, you can go ahead and finish, but we're gonna continue on. So I want you to look over at the other side of the screen. So there are four different writing parts that we saw when we read this that we're gonna ask you to have in your writing when it's your turn. So I'm gonna, again, use this tool, Miss Dichelet, to show where these parts are. That sounds good, right? Oh, I got more chats, hold on about the hummingbirds, how, how, how they grow, and how they are the same. Good job, Adanya. Okay. Oh man, hold on, I'm having computer problems. Okay. Ready, Miss Dichelet? I am so ready. All right, sorry about that. The tools are being kind of funny. So first thing that we need to look for is an introduction. So we need to know where to find the introduction in this writing. Now I know from learning writing at regular school for the past few years that the introduction usually comes, what do you think, first or last? I think it comes probably first. first. So the introduction then friends is going to be right here. So I put a little heart there 
to show you where you find the introduction. See? Okay. I'm going to read you the introduction. The introduction says, pollen helps plants make seeds, fruits, and new plants. Plants need birds to accidentally move pollen from plant to plant. These birds are called pollinators. That's the introduction, friends. It introduces the reader to what we're learning. It tells you exactly what you're about to read. The next thing that you need in your writing and that we have is a focus statement. So the job of the focus statement is to really zero in on what's the most important idea that the reader's gonna learn from your writing. And so our focus statement comes right after the introduction. Ooh. And it's one sentence long. And our focus statement says, hummingbirds are pollinators that help plants grow. Yeah. That's your focus statement. I can't click on anything, Miss Usually, so I'm just gonna, it's right there after the introduction, friends. <laughs> My mouse is gone. Okay. If you go to the next slide, I think it breaks it down in the PowerPoint. Um, I'm not sure though. Hold on. Oh, it's back. Okay, we're good. Yeah, let's keep going. Oh, we've got little dots everywhere. <laughs> That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got my mouse back, so we're good to go. So, Miss Ishley was just saying that we have a, to break this down. So, there are a few different things that you're going to need. Like we said, the introduction, then the focus statement, and then you're going to start writing detail sentences. So, you're going to start telling actual facts and new things that you want the reader to know about your writing. So, we can come back to this little checklist later. We're going to keep moving, though. So you're right, Ms. Tishley, here we are. We talked about our introduction and we talked about our focus statement, which is hummingbirds are pollinators that help plants grow. Guys, that's a really simple, simple focus statement. And pretty soon you're gonna see that we can exchange the word hummingbirds for any other pollinator that we know. We could say beetles are pollinators that help plants grow, mm -hmm. okay? You're right, the focus statement is second. You're so right. All right, so here are the detailed sentences that are in this piece of writing. I'll read it to you. Hummingbirds fly quickly to red flowers to drink nectar. When they visit the flower, pollen sticks to their long beak and the top of their head. Now the hummingbird has pollen grains on its beak and head. When it flies to another flower, some of the pollen grains fall off and are left there. That was a lot. We should break that down. That's four really great informational sentences. So this is the part of your writing where you really teach the person facts about whatever it is you're talking about. So in this case, we're talking about pollinators and hummingbirds. And so we need to teach whoever's reading this about how hummingbirds do what they do exactly, like with really cool details and exciting adjectives and words, just like we talked about in writing. Yeah, bee. bees do keep flowers growing. Exactly. And hummingbirds do too. I know this writing says bee right here, but it really should say hummingbird. So, but you could say the same thing about bees, right? That they get pollen grains on their beaks and their heads. So I want you to focus on the parts of this writing. So we talked about the introduction, which kind of gives you a little overview. The focus statement tells you exactly what you're going to learn about. And then the detail sentences are going to tell you the actual information that you're trying to teach somebody. And there's three questions that you have to answer for your detailed sentences. Three questions. I wanna quickly remind everybody before we continue, if you're typing in the chat, make sure it's a question or a comment about what we're learning about, okay? Okay. And lastly, in your writing, you're gonna to have to write a conclusion. We talked about conclusions when we did how-to writing. So if you watched those videos, then you're probably familiar. Um, this conclusion says, when the new flower is pollinated, a new seed can grow. Hummingbirds are important pollinators that help new plants grow and survive. So that's a really important way to wrap up your writing, friends, and to kind of return back to your focus statement and remind your reader what they needed to learn from your writing so they can go back and make sure that they got all that information. Your focus statement is super important in this section because you kind of just re-say it in a different way. You're right, those are all important pollinators. Butterflies, bees, beetles, hummingbirds, 
even some spiders and bats and things like that. All right, so to review with you one more time, the four parts of your writing that you need to have and that we have are the introduction, the focus statement, the detailed sentences, and then the conclusion. So there's four pieces. The longest one is gonna be those detailed sentences. That's like the, it's like the burger on your cheeseburger, you know, like the important part. Good, okay. So the last thing you're gonna do today, well, actually the second thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you your assignment for writing in a second, but do you wanna talk about scientific drawing, Miss Ishley? Yeah, so friends, you are going to be focusing the, your writing all on bees. So this week for your scientific drawings, you are going to be using these bee pictures to help you. So you can choose if you want the one on the purple flower, the yellow flower, or the blue flower. And you are going to be focusing on drawing that bee the exact way you see it. So if you see a, a curved circled body, make sure your body is curved and circled, okay? And then friends, make sure that you also add the detail of what the bee is on. So if the bee is on the flower, make sure that you show the flower. Show the size of the bee in relation to the flower, okay? So you are going to be doing this drawing four different times this week. Today you're going to be doing it for the first time, okay? And then you're going to keep going, all right? By the end, when you read us your, your um, informational writing, you're also going to be showing us your B drawing. So they kind of go together so that we can see that you've completed the task. So you're going to be drafting, right? And doing it over and over and over again and making it better each time. Is that right, Miss Ishele? That is right. Your first time isn't going to be the best and we know that. No one can be the best drawer the first time they do it. We've all taken a lot of time to practice, okay? So you're going to yeah. continue to practice drawing the B of your choice. All right, I'm going to um, show you your assignment that you need to do for your writing really quick, and then we're gonna let you go because we've been on here for a while. Okay. Some of you have groups to get to. Some of you have groups, some of you are busy. Okay, so you're gonna see an assignment that looks like this. It's called Parts of Informational Writing, and it, there's just a few questions, I think five questions, and one of them is, who are you? So you should all be able to answer that one easily. So you need to tell us what is the job of the introduction? What is the job of the focus statement? The job of the detail sentences and the conclusion. So I'm gonna quickly tell you those one more time so that everybody knows what they are doing. So remember, introduction starts you off. It tells the reader what they're gonna read about. Focus statement gives you your main idea. What's most important to know? From reading this. Detail sentences teach you lots of new information and conclusion wraps up your writing and reminds the reader about your focus statement. Okay so I'm going to attach this assignment to um, Google Classroom for today right after we get off and you can come back I'll post this video with it so if you want to re-watch the video to answer those questions or skip around and find the part you need to answer the questions, please do that. Okay? Thumbs up if you got me. If you're following along. All right, before we go, does anybody have a question that they want to ask or a comment about something that they learned? You can raise your hand or you can type in the chat because I can see you all now if you raise your hand. Briella, do you have a question or are you just thumbs, in, thumbs up in? What's up, Briella? You have to unmute yourself. Can't hear you. My question is, so on the work, it's going to be on your class or my class? I'm going to put it on both. So your work is going to be on your class, okay? All Good right. Question. Good question. Anybody else have a question that they need us to answer? No, you're all set. Did you guys like learning this way better? Yeah. It's kind of more fun, right? Mariah, you have a question? Yeah. You can unmute yourself. And it's not a lot of work. Yeah, you like this better, Briella? I'm glad. Mariah, what's up? Okay. 
Oh. <laughs> okay, bye, Mariah. All right, buddies, we will post this up. It'll probably take me like 10 minutes to post it because the video has to save and stuff. And then you can go back and watch and do your assignment, okay? Yes, B, we always see your work. Yep, we always look right. at it. <laughs> What'd you draw, Zaya? No. All right, friends, we're gonna hop off then and we're gonna post your assignments, okay? Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. We'll, we'll see come you back tomorrow. tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.